This is the third section of the Introduction to Conducting a Systematic Review Workshop. This section focuses on defining your review scope and developing your research protocol. You want to create a review protocol in order to have a detailed work plan for all of the steps of your systematic review and to identify how you're going to handle the decision points at each step of the review and to make sure that you avoid any potential problems that might occur because of a lack of detail along the way. Your review protocol documents the intentions of your review and your plan for each of the review steps. So how you are going to handle your research process, how you're going to handle screening, data extraction, synthesis. Um, so you will include your completed review question, your inclusion and exclusion criteria, you will lay out um, the, your plan for gathering literature, including the places you plan to search and the types of literature that you will find there. You will lay out how you're going to handle screening the literature that you find in your search, including which team members are going to be involved in screening and so on. Um, being so detailed in your protocol really will help make sure that all of your team members are on the same page. And once you've completed your review, it will allow others to compare your protocol to the completed review, um, which is helpful for journals in the peer review process to make sure that your review has avoided potential bias that may come from changing the plan or ad hoc decisions along the way. It will also allow for reproducibility of your review in the future. So this is the list of all of the components that should be included in your review. Um, it's important to note that you will want to be as detailed as possible about each of these elements, um, both for your own planning for the review, as well as for others to refer to in the future. To help you design your protocol, there are several resources that you can access. Um, Prisma has both a checklist of items to address that you can use as guidance for developing the protocol, as well as a checklist of items to report in your completed review that you can refer to to make sure that you will have all of the items that you will need to report in the completed manuscript. You can also check Prospero, a systematic review protocol registry, and see previous protocols that have been completed on similar topics, um, looking at similar types of literature, um, et cetera, to see both what their protocols look like and to get ideas about how you would like to handle certain decisions or how you would like to frame those decisions in your protocol. There are many places where you can deposit your protocol online and make it available um, in the future, including the UNC Institutional Repository. It's important as you're designing your protocol to remember that you will need to rely on other team members for the different steps of the review and to document in the protocol all the members of your team and what those team members will be responsible for. So when you're thinking about conducting a systematic review, you need to recruit experts to your team who can handle the common roles and skills for your review. It's common to have members who can bring clinical and topic expertise to the project, so we'll, who will be able to advise on creating a good review question, a strong search strategy, who will easily be able to understand the literature and so be able to complete screening and data extraction and help with completing your synthesis. You will want to have someone on your team who has expertise in systematic review methodology, who can help in crafting your protocol and help with decision points along the way. You will need um, the review members to come together to um, develop your question and your protocol. 
you will need someone with expertise in expert searching so that they will be able to design and carry out your comprehensive search strategy. There's also a lot of data management that goes into the review process, and so you will need review members who have time to take that on, um, as well as if you're thinking about including any sort of quantitative analysis, you would need someone with statistical expertise. Here is one example of what a systematic review team often looks like. Um, you can see here, this team has five members. It's common for systematic review teams to have three to six members, depending on the amount of literature that is going to be included in screening and synthesis, the timeline for the project, um, and other factors. The next step of the review focuses on moving from your protocol to creating your comprehensive search and will be discussed in the next video.